just as I've sat down to record this video, which I've actually been working on for some time, there has been some breaking news. Louis Capaldi has said he will take a break from touring for the foreseeable future, days after he struggled to finish his Glastonbury set. The Scottish singer who has Tourette's syndrome asked fans to help him by singing along at the festival. And this is from the BBC. He said, it became obvious that I need to spend much more time getting my mental and physical health in order. Okay, let's get into the rest of this video. A few months ago, I put out a video titled The Dark Side of Ambition. It looked at the brutal realities of the corporate music industry, the effects of endless touring, and the psychological damage professional musicians can face when their time in the spotlight comes to an end. That video blew up. It became clear that this was an issue that people wanted to talk about, needed to talk about. The 27 Club is not some glamorous, historic hangover from the 60s and 70s. It's still happening. The age range may vary, but there are still a frightening number of musicians dying young and middle-aged. So just what exactly is going on in the music industry? One of my favourite books of last year was Bodies, Life and Death in Music by Ian Winwood, a longtime Kerrang! journalist and author of books on Metallica and Green Day. Bodies explores the music industry's reluctance to confront its many failures. I caught up with Ian to discuss the book and whether things are changing for better or worse. As an aside, Ian would like me to point out that those aren't his choice of paintings in the background. He's in a hotel. This rock and roll behaviour stuff, this rock, it's rock and roll stuff, that's all great. Take it if you want, but what do you want? Do you want that or do you want the music? And you can only have them both together for a limited amount of time. If a music maker has reached the point where you as a member of the public, me as a member of the public, know their name, they have already gone through endured hardships that I think would surprise you and of which you cannot reasonably be expected to appreciate. They have already likely spent years honing their craft, playing to open across the country to, to, to no one, sleeping on floors, freezing in vans, uh, getting ripped off, getting knocked back, getting rejected. The people in those bands that that very quickly thought, do you know what, they say it for me, they've already split. They already split very early on. The ones that remain are the hard ones. They're the tough guys and gals. So then if they say, do you know what, I'm knackered, I, 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 my head's not well, I'm just going to step away from it a bit, believe them because they're telling you the truth, because they've already endured more than you would know to get to that point that you know who they are. So they're telling the truth. They're already tough. They're not the wimps that sometimes they're portrayed as being. They're tough and they just need a break, so cut them a break. These problems are not confined to the bands either. This is not just the problem of millionaire rock stars rattling around their empty mansions without purpose and then having to take out their own rubbish. This affects all levels of tour personnel. The sound engineers, lighting technicians and roadies all face the same dehumanising grind. The Journal of Psychiatric Research published a peer-reviewed report in 2021 titled Mental Health Issues Among International Touring Professionals in the Music Industry. A pre-pandemic survey of 1,154 individuals demonstrated elevated levels of suicidality and significant risks of clinical depression, stress, anxiety and burnout in the industry. The 19-hour days, month-long tours, temporary contracts, challenges in maintaining health routines and relationships, plus financial insecurity, were all contributing factors. In the UK, Entourage Pro's Industry Report 2023 survey revealed that 41% of crew have experienced mental health issues during a tour. 45% of crew have experienced mental health issues following a tour. 86% of crew have not yet received any mental health first aid training. Pre-pandemic, crew felt unable to say no to excessive demands of agents, promoters and managers. Post-pandemic, things got even worse. Two years of little to no work meant savings, if they had any to begin with, were seriously depleted. Plenty reconsidered their options and quit the industry altogether for more stable work. 
Those who hit the road again found their schedules are busier than ever as promoters seek to make up for lost time and recoup lost income. If you say yes to work, you're a disposable cog in a huge machine. If you say no, you have to deal with the fear of being left behind, that you'll be forgotten about, and that you won't be able to pay your bills. This, this hectic tempo that the music industry has that you've arrived, you're a happening band, but it's not going to last. So let's work, 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 work. And you're right, Mary, the sort of implication, the unspoken implication is that your time as an artist is limited. And when you're gone, we'll throw you away and someone else will fill that spot. If audiences and artists value each other, that drumbeat can be slowed down and they can take care of each other. And if they do, I don't think it much matters what the record company, or for example, or the promoter as well also. There's demand for a tour, let's go out on tour. But I've just come back off tour, I don't want to go out in two weeks time. Just slow it down, it can be done. I, I, at least I like to think that it can be done. And let's not forget the grassroots venues that are so essential to a healthy music industry. Even pre-pandemic, they were in serious trouble. According to the Music Venue Trust, 35% of UK grassroots music venues have closed in the last 20 years. The stress and pressure that owners and staff are under is unimaginable. They are a key part of this fragile ecosystem and need support. When it comes to mental health, music can be powerful therapy. It can be one of our greatest joys and help us grapple with our greatest sadness. Music itself isn't the problem, but is it possible to separate the music from the music business? A number of organisations have decided that in the absence of widespread change from above, they'll do what they can to support each other. To Linda Bennington, wife of the late great Lincoln Park frontman Chester Bennington, has founded 320 Changes Direction, a non-profit organisation that seeks to raise the issue of mental health awareness in music and to connect people to the resources they need. Backline is another organisation dedicated to connecting musicians, crew and their families with mental health resources. They offer access to a clinical network of over 365 therapists, psychiatrists, psychologists, social workers and life coaches, many of whom offer their services at reduced or pro bono rates. Tamsin Embleton is a psychoanalytic psychotherapist and author who has recently published Touring and Mental Health, the Music Industry Manual. She spent two years researching the psychological impact of touring, and in 2018, she set up the Music Industry Therapist Collective. Speaking in an interview with Nick Durden for The Independent, Embleton said, I've worked with people who were dropped by their label 10 to 15 years ago and who are still trying to put the pieces back together. But then this is a job that's all encompassing. While it lasts, the demands are endless and you can lose sight of who you are. And then when everything starts to go wrong, you lose everyone around you. You're suddenly less interesting and engaging. The phone stops ringing. When you're dropped, future plans and aspirations are terminated, which can be devastating and shaming and can shatter your sense of self. She found that 40% of men would not consider discussing their mental health until it reached a crisis point. So what else can be done? I don't pretend to have all the answers. This is not a change that can happen overnight. But to start, we can work to redefine what a career as a successful musician looks like, because it's certainly not all private jets between stadiums and an early death. A longer term career without burning out is possible. A fairer redistribution of a fraction of the wealth the industry generates and access to the same basic health services that come as given to those in other professions would be a good start. I'm lucky to have healthcare in the UK, thanks to the NHS, but that's not the same everywhere. A number of high profile US based musicians like Jeff Tweedy of Wilco have gone on record saying that despite their fame and success, they cannot get access to life insurance because people in their industry are not seen as a safe bet by insurance companies. That would be another welcome fix. Live music giants like Live Nation and Ticketmaster that profit off the labour of crew and creatives should put their hands in their pockets and fund mental health services or aid grassroots organisations like Backline in doing so. The same goes for streaming sites that make billions from paying artists fractions of pennies for their work. In the spirit of fairness, Live Nation do have a charitable arm and set up Crew Nation during the pandemic to support crew pledging $10 million with $5 million up front and a further $5 million in match donations from artists and fans. It's also fair to point out that Live Nation Entertainment's annual gross profit for 2022 was in the region of $4 billion. I'll let you do the maths on that one. 
governments should recognize the enormous soft power that culture brings and issues subsidies for artists that help fund recording and touring, plus more support for the grassroot venues that desperately need it. It would be a drop in the ocean of their current annual budgets, but could have profound, long-ranging effects. Tour and festival crews should have greater access to training, more flexible working conditions, and basic safety nets like sick pay so they can take time off without fear of being let go forever. Labels should have a duty of care to better prepare artists for the reality of life on the road, rather than working them until they drop. As audiences, we can all stop glamorizing and enabling bad behavior. Throwing TVs out of hotel windows is just so passe. We can also be kinder, as Ian said, to artists who have put their hands up and say they need a break. And most of all, we absolutely shouldn't stop talking about this issue. We can all work together to remove the stigma around therapy. I'm in therapy because I recognize that I have a far from normal life. And like so many people, I also deal with anxiety and negative thoughts on a regular basis. And I'm very lucky that I don't have to tour relentlessly to do my work, but because of the negative effects of too much social media and being a creator online are well known, I want to do everything I can to minimize the damage because I want to be doing this for a while yet. Together, we can change things for the better. Thank you so much for watching. Share your stories in the comments below and check out the nonprofits I mentioned linked in the description. But as always, look after yourself and I'll be seeing you here very, very soon.